Hey there. Had to get out of the uh, cave today and uh, do some things. Um, go looking for stuff, inspiration at uh, different places. And what I do often is I go to uh, thrift stores, not as much as I used to. But uh, today I figured I would and um, picked up some interesting things I'll share with you here. Really a pretty good find. Uh, I have the famous artist course, uh, but this one is the art instruction schools which is pretty similar in uh, quality from what I can tell. And um, this is a pretty slim little volume here. Uh, very good uh, technical stuff on drawing. And um, kind of, it was 10 bucks and it's like, well, I kind of figured, well, I, um, I think I need it in the library. So I study stuff like this usually in the mornings when I, uh, after I wake up. Okay, well that's a lot better with the fan turned off. I don't have that noise to deal with in the background. A couple other things. These are just uh, type of music that I listen to while I'm working. I'm not really looking for stuff that's aggressive or too rhythmic or uh, has uh, vocals necessarily. And this guy, Francis Lai, uh, have a lot of soundtracks by him. Uh, he's very underrated. You don't hear much about him. But I think he was incredibly gifted uh, with or orchestral arrangements. Uh, and I don't mean necessarily classical, also using electronic instruments and uh, electric guitars and all that sort of thing. So that's one. Uh, the New Seekers, Gordon Lightfoot, Don Quixote. Uh, don't know much about him. I've written some songs that I think are kind of in that sort of vein, so I'm going to learn a little bit from that. Now here's something interesting. Uh, an old frame. Well, a new frame trying to look old with the molding and stuff. And of course, this is the type of thing that typically people would have all their family shots in, you know. Well, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to really mess with this thing. I'm going to um, try to age the, uh, the look of this a bit, antique it a bit more so it's not quite as gold. So it'll look like it came out of the Adams Family House or something like that. And then behind it, I'm going to put a single piece of illustration board uh, draw out these shapes and I'm going to put some I'm not sure what but it's going to be a weird Adams family type of uh, family uh, you know collection of portraits and uh, we'll put that up for sale and um, probably on Etsy see what happens um, here's something do it yourself do it book and uh, I sat looking at this for quite a while I have so many books and I thought do I really really need this um, I do like these colors they were in those days, in the 60s, 70s, they were printing using a good bit of, um, uh, what do you call it, not cyan, magenta ink. And so, uh, man, when they wanted to do make something really pop with reds and these purpley colors, they could do that. But uh, I found techniques in here that um, I hadn't uh, necessarily thought of and I want to try. So having this book on hand is my reminder for that. Uh, here's some of that actually, uh, using medicine bottles as um, print to print with, dip in ink and then print on paper. And you can see you can create a lot of repetitive designs and things interesting. Look, I use stuff like that for my phase two work. And uh, it also occurred to me as like bottles could be cut in any way at any angle. Uh, bottles with handles could be cut, all kinds of uh, possibilities there. So this was a catalyst for uh, inspiration. And uh, the last book I picked up, I saw this title from a distance in another thrift store, Infinite Jest. And it's like, okay, you got my attention. What is this? Pick it up. It's like, is it a joke book? No, it's a novel by a fellow named David Foster Wallace. And my God, it's thick. How many pages is this thing? It's, um, it's like multiple novels or something. 1,070 some pages. Well, I flipped it over and I looked at the back and read this and it's like, of course, like every book, it has um, glowing reviews. But um, here's a brief description. Set in an addict's halfway house and tennis academy and a tennis academy and featuring one of the most endearingly screwed up families in contemporary fiction, Infinite Jest explores essential questions about what entertainment is and why it has come to dominate our lives. And that is something I've come to the realization lately, and I've been uh, talking about that to different people, about um, you know how entertainment has somewhat gotten out of hand. But anyway, to continue, 
about how our desire for entertainment affects our need to connect with other people and about what the pleasures we choose to say about uh, who we are. So, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of that. Um, entertainment has gotten to be a bit of a, te uh, a teat. Uh, society are, uh, tends to feed it to us, and it's like, oh, you work, you know, you're, you're struggling, you're a wage slave. Uh, go home, sit down, get on the couch, get entertained, live vicariously through other people's experience, and then wake up in the morning and do it all over again. So, anyway... I may not read all 1,000 pages. I did scan some of it, though, and it looks uh, very well written. And um, here's an old Sears catalog, 1961, 75 years of looking ahead. And um, I have a collection of these. I pulled some out, and I'm basically looking at them for... Um, I've never really used photo references for anything, but um, why not start a little bit? So that's what I'm using this for. And I've done some drawings on eBay lately, which are uh, based on photographs out of this book. Believe it or not, Hoffman swiped from photographs. Wow. Well, I'm almost 60 years old, and if I can't do it now, well, I think I've earned the right to do that. Here's a couple of those drawings I'd like to share with you. Uh, these were advertisements for ladies' underwear. That's where they came from, the Sears catalog. And I basically added stuff, and instead of looking at a, a, a mirror, whatever you call it, a little you know, makeup thing. It's now a Star Trek type communicator, perhaps an ear uh, piece, a microphone, something like that. And I added in everything else, uh, costume, background, the way I typically would for a science fiction piece. And uh, here's another one. I claim this is on Edgar Rice Burroughs Mars. But um, I, I find these poses interesting because from the, um, the, the distant past, 1961, uh, showing women uh, clad in their underwear. I'm not sure what year Playboy magazine started. I think it was 50-something, late 50s. But um, there was a sort of modesty that we don't really have, in, I think, in the same way today. So in this case, uh, the model was wearing on a girdle and a bra, but um, to be a bit more modest, the, hand, the uh, arms and hands were held in positions that would um, cover the breasts. And uh, perhaps to focus attention on the girdle, I thought, but then when I began to look at uh, other ones, they were doing the same things. Uh, this one does the same thing as well, even though it was for an adver uh, advertisement for a girdle. So anyway, that's part of what we do here. We go out, we explore, we create uh, from what we find, we put it together, we synthesize and, you know, get inspired. So see you next time. Bye.